Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. The summer patch has just been released a few days ago and as usual the servers still seem to struggle a bit with the transition to that new version of Battlefield 4. A side effect of that appears to be the issue with the dusting in dogfights, which the summer patch actually aimed to improve. So right now you have to lead your shots quite a lot in order to actually hit the enemy jet. It is possible that this will fix itself during the next few days once the situation in the data centers comes down again, but the developers at Dysale already have an eye on the situation. Now if you think that Dysale would take things a bit slower now after they just pushed out this patch, then you couldn't be more wrong as they are already working on the fall patch. And since Dragon Valley is planned to be released this year with the holiday patch as a Christmas present, it looks like there will be much less time between the summer patch and the fall patch than there was between the spring and the summer patch. So what can we expect from the fall patch? The developers have reworked the network graph quite a bit. Not only were values like the latency changed, but also new values like the behind server were added. I will have a special video ready very soon where I will explain all of these new values. Then there were two features ported over from Battlefield Hardline. One is the squad leader replacement system that is meant to get rid of squad leaders who are not willing to do their job. The way this works currently is that when a squad member requests a new order, then the squad leader has 30 seconds to give a new order, otherwise he will be replaced by one of his squad members. This is still in a very early state and the designers will do more changes. They also want to make it more obvious to the squad leader that he will get replaced if he doesn't do his job. And the squad member then also has to be aware when he gets the squad leader position. I also hope that they will look into the issue that the squad members often do not even notice when they get a new order from their squad leader. The second feature that was brought over to Battlefield 4 is the display of the flag capture zones. This means that on the minimap you will now see where these zones are, which is not just helpful when you attack an objective, but also when you defend it, as you now have a much better idea where to look for the enemy players, in case that one of them plays hide and seek with you. If I could pick one more hardline feature to get ported over to Battlefield 4, then this would be the loadout presets. Because I find myself changing my weapon attachments quite a lot right now in retail due to severed graveyard shift. And it's really quite annoying, to be honest, to constantly change your weapon attachments. Another really great new feature is the elevation system for the minimap. The way this works is that the size of the icon is telling you if the enemy player is on the same level of you or if he isn't. Again, this is in a very early stage, so it might change over the next few weeks. Also planned to be released together with the fall patch is the community map project, which might get the name Operation Outbreak. Which name it will really get in the end is now up to the legal team of EA, which has to sign off on it. If you haven't seen the community map project in quite some time, then you will have noticed in the gameplay how much it changed in the past few weeks. The designers have put an incredible amount of detail into the map, so that it is really the most stunning now that we have in the game. It looks just gorgeous. But they didn't just work on the looks, they also added support for more game modes like Gunmaster, Team Deathmatch, Domination, Rush and Chainlink. I predict that this map will very quickly become highly popular once it gets out into retail, as it feels really fresh and the gameplay in Conquest Large is very diverse, since you have a lot of tactical freedom there. So these changes all sound quite good and there are surely more to come in the next few weeks. But there is one change where I had to scratch my head when I first read it in the changelog. The developers changed the smoke grenades so that they now block thermal and night vision sights after a couple of meters. So when I read about that first I was really not sure why they would do that and the reason for that is my personal playstyle. Because I use the smoke and thermal sight combination to play tactical. This means that when I play rush and we have a hard time to even get to the MCOM, then I use the smoke plus thermal sight to play the objective. This also works on the defender's side when you get overrun by the attackers. And it really surprises me constantly how the majority of players is not able to use this tactic in order to turn a loss into a win. But Rush is not the only game mode where this tactic can be applied. It also is extremely useful when you play Obliteration. And it is also very very easy to counter. Just throw in a flash grenade or use the tech light. So why would Dysale do that change, which would decrease the tactical depth of Battlefield 4, which does not have that much to begin with? When I then began to research why there were some players complaining about the smoke plus thermoside combination, I started to understand why there is some hate towards that tactic. 
On maps like Metro and Lock, it appears to have become a bad habit for some people to just camp inside a cloud of smoke and kill people through it with their thermal sight. Since I never play on any of these maps except for obliteration, I never encountered that situation. Which is surely a frustrating thing to happen when you play on these maps, but are two maps really reason enough to make such a massive change that affects all maps and nearly all the game modes? Especially when you consider how easily you can spoil those people's fun by just throwing in a flashbang to blind them and take use of your tech light. Or use the hand flares to blind the enemy and use his confusion to flank him. What I personally find much much more of an issue than the smoke plus thermal combo is the flashbang's ability to completely blind you for 5 seconds in bright daylight, which you cannot counter at all. But what did DICE change exactly and how bad is it now in the CTE? On the left side you see how it works currently in retail and on the right side you can see how it works in the CTE after the changes. So you can clearly see on the right how the enemy is less visible at a distance of 15 meters. And at 20 meters he will be gone completely. While in retail you can still see him through the smoke at a distance of 40 meters. So after I actually tested the change, I think that it will not harm how I use the smoke plus thermal combination to play the objective. I think that it will even make the combination more useful when playing tactical, as from more than 20 meters away the enemy can no longer shoot me through the smoke. Which means that it will work better to conceal my movement and to arm or disarm a bomb or an NCOM. While when you are inside the smoke or entering the smoke, you can still use the thermal to clear out the enemy soldiers. I'm at least willing to give this change a try and then we will see how it actually affects the gameplay on all the maps and in nearly all of the game modes. If you have tried it already and have ideas for how Dysale could tweak it even further, then please head over to the Battlefield 4 CTE subreddit and share your feedback there. Alright guys, that's all I have for you now. As I said earlier, I am working on that video about the network graph changes and I hope to have that one out soon. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.